Yo, what's going on Dragon Ballers? Welcome back to another gameplay video. Yesterday you saw the deck that Danny created to revive Super Shenron. Today we are going to see a little bit of gameplay involving the deck. Now, of course, this isn't the most like, you know, meta gameplay you've ever seen in your life, but Oob is a deck that has topped before. Uh, it's a good deck. I think it's pretty strong. Draws a lot of cards, which is, uh, you know, that being aggressive something you want to see in a deck for sure and we have Danny super shot on this on the right so a few things here you're gonna see a little bit of oob gameplay and then you're also gonna see you know what an innovative deck on the right you know uh a really creative deck can uh, can do and you know the, the the deck profile yesterday was you know for fun uh it's Danny you know just revisiting his old flame but uh the deck actually does things so uh we're gonna see in this video as always, guys, if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date with all the awesome Dragon Ball Super content that I post here. And if you'd like to purchase any of the cards you see in this gameplay, make sure to use my link to TCG Player in the description below. Also, check out the Patreon if you are looking for some more competitive content now that we are gearing up towards the Nationals. Only a few weeks away. Super excited, guys. If you're there, definitely come say what's up. Uh, but with that being said, we've got the gameplay. Danny's up first, looking through his life. Does not seem to be any balls in his life, which is actually what he wants to see. He wants to, you know, have his opponent give him all his life by, you know, attacking typically. And then he wants to thin the deck out as much as possible. Because if you guys watch a deck profile from yesterday, uh, there's a lot of math involved in this deck. He has to, it's something like having one life, one card in deck. The rest of his battle cards, you can only have three on the board, I believe. And then he has to have all the rest of his battle cards in his drop area going into his opponent's next turn. So the math is very serious. He's going to pitch a Mega Focus Sun Goku and pass turn off Coco. Coco is good for filter. Also lets him get cards in his drop area. So dual purpose there. Oops, starting off pretty good. This is one of our locals, Kevin on the right. He's a younger guy. He's like 15, uh, but he's got a pretty good grasp of the game. So that's pretty cool to see, you know, a little bit of the younger generation getting involved in the game. That's, uh, that's pretty awesome. But with that being said, Oops, starting off strong with a Dende. Searching the turn to play Videl. Both decks seeming to start off good. Danny has a very, very aggressive hand. He's got three intense fine power trunks, uh, which is pretty good against a deck like Oob. Like, it's a leader that has to attack a leader to draw. So against things like that, Herdegarn, if they don't have like a real two drop that can deal with it, that's going to allow you to get that thing to live a few turns and, you know, take some life, deal some crit. Uh, really good over the course of a long game. So Danny does actually have two balls in his life. He's going to pull them out here. I guess he was hoping that uh, Kevin would give him one off of his life. That's one and two. Coco pitching an Android 17. Another bursting card. So Mega Focus and Android are both bursting cards. Now, Danny does try and charge pretty much all red in this deck because it's a, ch a chain attack deck, um, amongst other reasons. But there are some good green cards in the deck that help you awaken and get your burst going pretty quickly. So here he is going to assemble out the Android. It's crit, perfect. Not gonna give Kevin any extra resources. Milling a super combo though, never really wanna see that, but it is what it is, it happens sometimes. Back to Kevin coming on turn two. This is a very explosive turn for Oob and we're about to see that right here. So we've got leader going in at leader, he's gonna combo the Dende. Kevin does do his combos in a weird spot. He puts his combo in his energy area and his energy in his combo area, but it's uh, easily signified, so we kind of all just agree upon it. Sorry if that's a little uh, a little tough to look at. My apologies. So we've got the Hercule into the pan, the draw two and the untap one. Definitely good because Danny's coming up on one of his aggressive turns here. Turn three wants to put a lot of pressure on, awaken, do some free assemble things, and ideally he's going to be able to skip turn four. Actually, part of the math is pretty funny. If he wants to have you know three battle cards on board, he cannot charge more than four energy. Which is uh, kind of funny to think about. That's going to allow him to awaken. He's going to replay a ball, draw one. And that is a really good awaken for Shenron leaders. Like, sometimes when you're playing regular Shenron or Purunga, it's tough to get, like, a world piece in the drop. Like, you can do it with Super Shenron. Uh, sorry, Super Dragon Ball. But uh, it's not always ideal. You might have targets you want to drop, like your uh, Gogeta 7, like your Kaioken. But besides that, the getting the Dragon Ball back is really good. Back in the day with real super shenron like or i guess i guess op super shenron you were able to grab back super dragon ball sometimes and do some really degenerate plays uh man what a time thank goodness this game is where it's at now because back then not the best of times so kevin wasn't able to deal with the androids because like i said his leader had to swing a leader to gain advantage doesn't want to put the hercule in risk of dying understandable 
Uh, the pan though is not really gonna die probably because of you know just the nature of Danny's deck. He can potentially like attack it with chain attack, but the pan will be at 25k, so that's gonna be hard to deal with. He can attack the Hercule actually with the, with the chain attack. That'd be pretty good. Kevin would have to waste a good amount of cards to save that. He does have the energy up for like a negate though if that becomes relevant. So the Android bursting again, another crit that Kevin's pretty much forced to take. Doesn't have an efficient way to combo out of it. Now Kevin is playing Oob with the Ultra Instinct package. So really Kevin has potential to turn three kill here. You know that that pan is going to put on a ton of pressure. And the thing with Danny's deck is he can't really play extra card negates, but he does play Topo negate. So Topo negate, very, very good at stalling that type of aggressive strategy. So we're, it's really going to see what it's really going to depend what Danny has in his hand and what he's able to uh, do with this turn with leaving two energy up if he has topo in hand but there, never mind that's out the window already he's going to drop the mega focus on goku mill three give it the ability to attack actives and kevin is going to negate with the announcer play, play by play pro good play by him kevin gets another turn to live now coming up on the dandy's next turn he's uh he's ideally wanting to skip from four to five and He's got a good amount of the way of the drop area there. I believe he's, and I appreciate Danny for uh, fanning out for it like this. It looks like he's got uh, 14 in drop. So he's about halfway there. He's got uh, a little bit more work to do. He does have three bursters on the board though. We'll see how many Danny, uh, we'll see how many Kevin can deal with by the time he gets to Danny's next turn though. And this is an important strategy. Like even, um, let's say Super Shenron, this is a meta version of Super Shenron, right? Like it would be much more advantageous for Kevin to probably deal with the battle cards rather than attack his life, especially when Danny has a very large hand like he does. It's going to be a lot harder to, um, you know, kill him essentially. But Kevin deciding not to attack with the leader there because he d he's not going to gain advantage if he does. Debating where to swing with the pan. Not totally sure where this is going, but we'll see in a second. He is going to super combo the pan. I am quite curious where this is going. This might be a leader. This might be a pressuring swing at leader. Realistically, pan can do it on her own here with 35k double strike. Danny has a lot of cards in hand, so he could play defense and defend it. He probably should, to be honest. But we all know Danny loves to uh, take his sweet time for deciding what the play is. Looks like Danny's going to super combo. Looks like this is a swing at leader. So 35 at leader here. Danny's at 25. So he needs 15 more to get out of this. That's 5, uh, 10, and 15. Yep. So he is in a combo out of the leader swing. That's going to put four more in his drop area, putting him at, I believe it's 18 in drop now. So he is on his way to skipping turn. He's, uh, he's almost there. And uh, he's got two more bursters that are going to help him do just that. Depending on if they live or not. We'll see where the pan swings next. He's going to hard cast a Toa Revenge Blocker. Interesting main deck choice. Very interesting. I guess he uses it as help for um, things like Kyle Ken, things like Gogeta 7. It is good in those types of matchups for sure. So he's going to get rid of one of the Bursters with the Oob effect to take a life. That Oob is now a 20k single striker. He's going to combo the announcer play-by-play -play pro for a 25. So Danny's going to take that one. Now Kevin has six in his drop area. Pan is going to go in again. That's a 30k pan. Now, I think on Kevin's part, it would have been a little better to be in on the first pan swing, just because, you know, it would have been two 30k swings. Basically, when you have a dual attacker and you sense to be in it, uh, that's a free five, well, not a free 5k combo, but that's a 5k combo that lasts for two attacks. You know, it's better than, you know, comboing two individual 5ks twice. And if Kevin had a reason to untap that energy, that would have been pretty good. Uh, wondering if he can do the ultra instinct play maybe he's taking his life to dig for that middle goku it doesn't look like he has it i think he's got the ultra instinct but not the bigger uh not the middle goku that you need the one uh, from the anniversary box but he does draw into goku Oob, and that's pretty solid both of them with comparable hand sizes looks like kevin is gonna all in here so that's 20 because of the goku boost 30 40 50 60 k not too much, unfortunately. It looks like Kevin only saw one of his super combos throughout the game. But I think so far, Danny's only seen one. I know he milled one. Might have only activated one as well. So yeah, 30, 40, 50, 60. 
Debating on if he wants to combo in the Goku, but it looks like he's just going to save it for another swing if necessary. 25. 35. Oh, there's a dead topo in his hand. 45. 55. So I believe Danny needs 10 more to get out of this. He's going to combo the Kai in his hand, looks like. Yep. So that's going to get him out of it. He does have the Goku swing. So Danny will have to drop 25k if he does not want to take this. And there he has the 20, he has the 15, or sorry, the 10 to get to 25. Kevin's in a rough spot. He's got a 5k in his hand he can defend with, but he's tapped out. So he cannot combo with the Ultra Instinct in his hand. Danny might have the 30 right now. He's got four in deck, which he needs to see, I think. Rough thing is, Danny has to get something on the board in order to uh, kill him. He can't swing this leader. That looks to be 30. Looks to be 30 with no battle cards on board. But he does have an assemble in hand, which is very good. Looks like he's going to remove the Dragon Balls, shuffle in the deck. <clears throat> now that assemble is fully live, he has access to any threat he wants. Assemble, grabbing Quick Rush Trunks, attack the leader, and a super combo in hand, and that's pretty much going to wrap up the game there. So, uh, realistically, yeah, I mean, that was a battle between, uh, I would call a pretty high-tier rogue deck with Oob and the deck that Danny created. Pretty fun. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully, you guys see that the uh, the deck is, I would call it playable. I think it's pretty fun. So, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time.